Now I haven't had a new desk. This in fact is a stereogram. This is a very nice Dynatron HFC 205, don't you know? These are very posh. Made in England, appointed by the Queen. This is in really nice condition as well. The owner doesn't want anything doing to it cosmetically, which <laughs> just I couldn't imagine what could be done. However, he says one of the output channels doesn't work, so it's only got a, a left or a right or whichever. So it needs a good service. So definitely this problem is going to be in the amplifier tuner unit. That's going to be stripped down and repaired. Give the record player a going over, just make sure that's in good condition. And uh, same with the cassette player. Hopefully this isn't too long and hits the ceiling of the workshop. We'll find out. Get it on its end. It's not too complicated. And a nice little reminder. Duly noted. Well, let's see what crawls out of this. I don't have the best of luck with some of these. Some real nasty, creepy crawlies. Oh! <laughs> dropped the screws already. You can see on the inside that this was an expensive piece of kit in its day. I mean, here's the amplifier and the tuner assembly. And here's a Garrard uh, record deck. Looks in nice nick to be honest. See if this grease is uh meh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's still quite slippery. We'll see if it works. At least it's not an auto changer, so it's gonna have less trouble. Straight away I'm seeing one of the problems. Um though I think these must be the output amplifiers and uh, there's a fuse blown. Um it won't just be the fuse, will it? We'll pull this out and test it separately. As as it just clips out. This very quaint sort of freezer tie sort of tags going on. That's to make life a bit easier. Just going to measure the voltage that comes out of this power supply here. And what have we got? Oh, 49 volts. Let's see how lucky we are. Is it just a blown fuse? And if it is, why is it? Let's see if it works. We're just going to make the connections onto this. So I'm going to start with the power. I've got 50 volts dialed into the power supply, which bypass that fuse. And we need to connect the ground to these black wires, we'll just look in here, they come there, so it's easiest to connect actually onto the emitter of this transistor. So we'll pop that in there. There we go, now we need the signal. So there's a ground on this pin there, and we've got the signal goes in there. And finally the outputs, we'll use the oscilloscope probe on there, it's pinned there, that's where the output goes, that stays on. Okay, let's see what she does. Just check for any DC offset voltage that might cause <laughs> fuses to pop. Oh, we have it 22.8 volts. That's massive. Although this is capacitively coupled at both ends, might have to put a little bit of load on it, a bit of resistance. Let's find something to load this up with. I don't know. This... No, 100 ohm resistor will do. <laughs> Not a standard. The speakers, of course. No, can't kind have of that on there. So I can dodge that in there. I need to connect this to a ground. Ah, oh, where the grounds? Oh, whack that on there. You won't mind. Anyway, 100 ohms on the speaker. See if that gets rid of that bloody offset voltage. Oh, it doesn't like that. Oh, crikey. I've got suspicions about that capacitor being leaky. 
I will soon deal with that. Is that the one there? Hmm. Ah, which pin is it? Well, there's a bit of residual voltage across it, which is probably understandable. Very slow to discharge, and it doesn't seem faulty. No, I've just rewired it again. Not really made any changes, but with this disconnected, it's not quite so horrific. In fact, it's stabilised. Offset is now half a volt and, and dropping steadily. Yeah. Output's perfect, current's happy. Yeah, I think this is okay. Yeah, that's much better. Slight difference, connect the load to earth. Yeah. I think it's good. I'm not sure what went on before, but it's not doing it now. We'll resolder that cap back in, see what difference that makes. that back on. Oh my god. It doesn't like that. So I'm thinking there's something odd going on from this snubber network here because that's all we're disconnecting when we lifted the capacitor out. Oh hang on, is this just a bad lead? Dodgy test leads. God's sake. Yeah this is working fine. Mess me around a bit, but I mean dodgy cable. Look at that. Anyway, it's working. It is just a fuse after all that. So we'll change the fuse. Should have done that in the first place. It's a fast blow 1.6 amp. Let's put the new one in. Hmm. Get back to the whole assembly. Well, the great result is we got stereo sound it was just the fuse amazing how long that took to change anyway I checked it out the radio functions really good happy with that it's not doing the uh, FM stereo output light the little LED um, that's normally just a chip there with CA 1310 I we'll just replace those this one's even on a socket it's probably gone before That's exciting. It works. This job's getting easier and easier. Well, that's pretty brilliant. Even the queuing mechanism's working. Good, good, good. Does it handle the lead out? Will it return? Down. Down. Happy days! Just a tape player to look into. Oh, it doesn't quite sound quite happy. Does it rewind? No rewind. Oh. Fast forward. It'll fast forward as long as you hold it down. Yeah. Not terrible though. That's got to come out then. Hope it's just these screws. Squeaky screws. That seems to be loosening it. I don't feel like they've got much um, drive behind them. 
Well, what do you know? You just take these bloody screws out underneath, and the whole enclosure comes off. Well, that's a bit easier. Feed these cables through. Do you reckon to this? This took longer to come out than Philip Schofield. Well, let's get it on the bench. Now I've calmed down a bit about it. I think this is actually just mechanical problems. I'm sure of it. I think it's going to be gummed up old grease, like on the old record players, and um, stretch belts, worn out belts, and I reckon that's about it really. Um, I just don't know how complicated it is to strip this down yet. Well, let's start as normal. Just take all the screws out that we can see. See if it falls apart in front of our very eyes. Well, that was short lived, can't see any more screws. Ah, it's just occurred to me, this whole stereogram's really well put together. I'm probably overthinking how hard this is to get at it for maintenance. Just take the top board off. There we go, oh look at that. All these mechanisms here. This will be where the trouble is. There'll be some pivot that's seized or something. This oh, the belts just fell off. <laughs> Let's get that changed. Got to take this roller off, which is the capstone, but it's trapped in with this bracket. I say trapped, retained. The word is. So I think we have to take these screws out here. This is the eject mechanism. It's an unusual way of doing it. Well, what do I know? <laughs> A minute ago I said this was really well built. Oh, there we go. Things are falling off. There we go, and the belt's off. That's what scrap. And pull the capstan out there. You can see all the mechanisms when you're pressing buttons, what they do. Oh, oh, look at that there. There's a. I shouldn't do that, surely. Hmm. I think there's a screw missing here. That's on the fast forward. Is that fast forward? Yes it is. So fast forward would hold on, it will work if you, you have to hold it in. Yeah, this is the forward mechanism. Still not latching. Look what we got here. Screw and some sort of spacer. Well, that's part of the trouble. They've just fell off. That looks pretty convincing to me. Get the screw through it. Yeah, that's got to be how it goes. Yeah. Shook itself apart. <laughs> it still behaves badly though. I'll start just giving this a bit of this IPA treatment. The alcohol will dissolve some of the old grease as well, it will thin it down. Might start to free it all off. It's starting to sound a bit more clunky and snappy how I'd expect. Apart from this one. What button's that one? No. <laughs> I'll fast forward. Whatever's up with the fast forward button, it's still not right. Oh, we're chasing another ghost. I've just seen the issue. On this design here, the, there's no latching mechanism there. So this can't actually lock down. These hook shapes allow it to latch, but there's the fast forward button. It's just a curve. There's no latching tooth. So it's not broken. 
that's just how they designed it. Oh well. Bit of lube and a new belt then. Well I'm just going to give this tiny bit of machine oil. Just where all these little sliding bits are. We don't want to put much on at all. Be very careful not to end up putting oil on our actual cassette tapes. That would be a bit silly. That should just be enough just to free it off, just where it slides. Now just give it a work, give it a work through just to get that oil embedded. I've got the cap stand back in. That's nothing wrong with that. Let's try this belt out for size. I reckon it's about right. We'll give it a go anyway. Let's put this slot back in. Remember which way up it goes. That goes in on there. And then there was this eject mechanism. That way round. It went that way round, I think. Yes. Now ah, that's got the thread going now. So enough slack to get this back up there. Yes, there is. That's still on centre. A bit easier without that cable in the way. I'll chop the bugger off. There we go, just nip that up a little bit. And there's this spring, it's just covered in gunk. I think I might have stretched it a little bit, stretching it off. Moves well enough. Let's put this back down. Put a couple of screws in. Let's see how it runs. This is like house wiring. Find one of those screws. Good from the other side. We're all back together now. Let's see how good we've done it. Oh, we have a smug face on Mark now. Fast forwards, beautiful rewinds. Pause it. Ice is excellent, and there's no sort of warble to it. So that belt was spot on. All in all, an easy fix, ish. That's the turntable works, the radio works, the cassette play works. There's nothing else left on this. Happy, happy repairs. To get this back to its owner, catch you next time.